Hello everyone, Neil Tappin here from Golf Monthly and welcome to this video in which we're going to take a look at the seven shots that every golfer needs. Now these are things from the, the tee all the way through to the green that are really going to help you shoot lower scores. They're not necessarily the flashy shots that everyone wants to hit, but they certainly are the ones that are going to help you get your handicap down, so they are well worth learning. Now the advice in this video comes from PGA Pro Alex Elliott. He'll offer you everything you need to know and how to play these shots. Uh, guys, if you're new to the Golf Monthly channel, please do hit the subscribe button to make sure that you don't miss any of our videos. Hit the like button if you like what you're watching. But let's head out now onto the golf course here at West Hill and look at the seven shots that every golfer needs. If you want to keep your score ticking over, you're going to need to be able to play this sort of half pitch shot. And it's one that so many golfers struggle with, yeah. myself included, Alex. Why is it that people struggle with this shot, do you think? For me, it's the lack of speed. So it's a lack of commitment. Right and yeah. not set it up to it correctly. I, anything that we're talking around short game, we've got to be set up to it correctly because we've not got the speed, we've not got the momentum, we've not got that time to compensate and hit the shot. Yeah, so there's nothing shot. you can do about the fact that you can't put much speed into the shot. It is what it is. Exactly. But how, how do you set up to it properly so that you can take the kind of bad shots out of play? So straight away, I want to feel as though I grip in the middle. So I have even amounts of grip at the top of the bottom. Okay. So sh shortening the length of the club. And if you think about it, we're looking for accuracy, we're not looking for distance. So all these things are everything that's going to help us give control rather than give distance. Okay, fine. I like to feel ball in the middle of stance, shoulders parallel to target line, but lower half slightly open. And this is the best thing for me. I'd, I'd encourage a lot of you to make some one-handed practice swings because it's amazing. Any time you make a one-handed practice swing, actually, most people swing it on plane and most people swing it really good. So I would put my right hand onto my left elbow and just make some practice swings back and through. Really trying to concentrate on, can I create this L shape? So every time you do this, I've not even thought about doing this. I've made the club feel light. It's not feeling heavy and too far around the corner. It's not too far out and in front of my hands. It's not heavy in each direction. Anytime the club feels light, it's a lot easier for me to control speed. Okay, can I just ask you, why do you open up the, your hips? So what, what does that do for you? By opening your stance up a little bit, what, what does that do? Helps us clear that left side. So a lot of people go wrong when it's very scoopy. So if I was to stand very square on, this would encourage sort of a more scoopy nature to the motion. Right. So I'd always start with a bit of a routine, club down behind the ball, everything starts parallel, ball in the middle of the stance, lower half opens, weight goes left, a little bit of a waggle. Yeah, very nice. And then we get a good bit of consistency. We've got a routine. Anytime we've got a routine, we can trust it. And the one thing you have to do with this shot is practice. A stock shot. Alex, it's something that everyone needs, right? Definitely. Everyone needs a shot they can rely on, a swing thought that they can have that's really going to just help them get the ball in play. What's your advice here? I think a stock shot, we've got to have it where when we're under pressure or when we're not playing our best golf. And if we can get the ball around the golf course that way, that's our best best golf. I think that's most impressive golf. Yeah. Stock shot that gets us around the course. Okay. So I think most golfers will tend to fade to slice it. So I think it's working out on the day is it more fadey today or is it a little bit straighter? Because sometimes we have days where we feel better and it becomes a bit more of a straight shot. So I tend to get five golf balls before I got on the golf course. And maybe these are my last five before I actually walked the first tee. No real swing thoughts. What I would try and do here is... No swing thoughts at all? No, I want you to, at this point, we've gone through that process of working on a swing thought and maybe getting a feel into the swing. What happens if I naturally make a swing? What ball flight comes out? Okay. Because if we can let the ball flight dictate our swing, then that's a great place to be in. Okay. How many times have we've all done this, no matter the level of golfer, we've tried so hard to get it into a certain position, we're not really worried about the ball flight. So for your last five shots, make a swing, let's see what ball flight comes out. Right, okay, so when you're out on the golf course then, Alex, do you not, you play with no swing thought? You're just focusing on the target and the ball flight? I, I, I separate it like this. I have kind of like a virtual line, which is thinking zone, playing zone. Right. So I'm quite heavily thinking about technique and swing thoughts right here. As soon as I step over the line, I let the shot dictate the swing. Right, okay. Because I use a theory, we all practice to improve our technique. So we've got to trust that actually improving our technique. We'll, why are we improving our technique? So it becomes an inherent movement. So I keep reminding me what my kind of blue star, my gold star, my blueprint is. So when I get over here, I trust that what I've done in my routine, 
is going to somewhat come into my golf swing, but simply shot dictates the swing. Okay, so your stock shot would tend to be a little fade, would it? Yeah, nice? definitely. Yeah? Definitely. Okay. Some days it comes out a little bit straighter, so it's for me just finding out what it is. And right. I would tend to split these five golf balls up, three with my seven iron and two with driver. Go on then, hit a couple for us. There's one, yep, a little, little bit of a fade. Little fade. So straight away, I've got a little bit of feedback. Again, no real thoughts, just seeing what ball flight comes out. Again, a little bit of a fade. So I'm getting some feedback right now, knowing that just out on the golf course today, I can expect a little bit more of a fade. Yeah, and you can see now that that's building a picture in Alex's mind, should be building a picture in your mind of exactly the sort of shape you'll have. So when you get into the golf course, you can have a positive image in, the, in your mind before you play the shot. And if you can do that, you should be able to get the ball around the golf course in fewer shots. Okay, so I guess this one, Alex, is on the list because it's one of the most intimidating shots that people face, yeah. isn't it? So having to hit a chip shot over a bunker, it's tricky for anybody. Um, in this scenario, you've got a little bit more green to work with with the yeah. flag, but if the flag was a little bit closer to the bunker, this would be a very intimidating shot for a lot of people. How do you play it? I think a lot of people go wrong with this kind of shot straight away, is, especially if this flag was a little bit closer, is the Phil Mickelson million-dollar shot of trying to land it just over the bunker and take all the risk into play. Right, yes. I, I always try and think if there's not a lot of green between the fringe and the flag over bunker, try and land it in the hole. So I always overcompensate and take 10, 15, even 20 foot past the flag. Right, so you're taking the bunker out of Yeah, I think yeah. for a lot of golfers, if we can avoid going in here, we avoid that card wrecker. Okay. And we can keep our score going. That, I think, that also begs the question, how do you avoid hitting it 50 yards definitely. over the back? <laughs> so the setup that I like to use is, is ball position in the middle of my stance, choose my most lofted wedge, which is my 58 degree. I then really like, want to feel a little bit of separation between upper and lower. So I feel like my shoulders point towards or parallel with target, but my lower half, so my feet and my hips are slightly open. If we think in the long game, everything that we're looking for is to be open at impact and be through to target. Whereas in the short shot, we've not got the speed, we've not got the momentum for that. So it's almost right. like preempting where we want to be. Okay, fine. So I lay the field, just get that split, and I almost feel my stance is very, very narrow, ball in the middle, underarm throwing it through towards target. And really trust that I've got to put the speed in. Now, if I took a really long backswing, I might tend to deaccelerate into the ball to control the distance that way. Right. However far back you go, is how far through we go. Let's imagine the flag is a little bit closer okay. to us than it is, because it with this shot, it would be a slightly more straightforward shot, but if the yeah. flag was a bit closer to us. So again, I would picture landing it into the hole. I wouldn't open the face too much. I've chosen my most lofted wedge and trust the fact that the loft is gonna come from what club I've taken. Okay. Ball in the middle, weight slightly left. Very and good. trust that it's gonna land over, roll just past the flag. And I'd always say to every single person, we'd rather have a 10 foot putt past the flag or even 20 foot putt than be in the bunker in front of us. Yeah, if you can, devote a little bit of time to that in practice because it's the sort of shot you're gonna need from time to time out on the golf course and avoiding the bunker and avoiding hitting it over the back is the only way to keep your score intact. Okay, so this one is about the punch. Now, a lot of people watching this might think to themselves, well, you know, I, I want to master, you know, a normal golf shot before I develop yeah. the punch. But actually, it's a shot well worth practicing, isn't it? Because it can teach you an awful lot about your game. Definitely. I think what most people are looking for with their irons, hands ahead of the golf ball, hit, hit the ball and turf. That's everything this shot sort of tending itself to be. So yeah. it can actually have some great benefits technical wise. Yeah. Okay, so how do you play it? How, how can people play in the sort of most simple and effective way? So, first off, we've got to think of like we're trying to lower the ball flight. So we want a little bit less speed and less spin. So right. less so, speed and less spin, a little bit more gripping yeah, down. Yeah, so, so, so by having, when you have more spin, more backspin, it doesn't matter what level you are. I think a lot of people associate backspin with like tall level, yeah, but everyone definitely. creates backspin. The harder you hit it, the more you create, the higher the ball will go. That's the basic physics, right? Exactly. Yeah. So shorten the lever. So make, ultimately making, gripping the golf club closer towards the steel. Ball towards the back of our stance. So I try and tend to use my reference points as where my buttons are on my shirt. Yeah. Just to write my buttons, no okay. specific point really start everything feeling like it's working parallel to target. I then open up the lower half and weight goes left. Why do you open up the lower half? Now, without going into too much detail, 
the more you hit down on it, the more likely this ball's gonna wanna squirt a little bit out to the right. So I open up my stance and feel as though I swing down my feet line and hit down on it that way. Right, okay. Go on then, hit one for us then, Alex, so can you? Club down, gripping down more towards the steel. Start with everything parallel, and that's a really nice point. Open up the lower half, weight goes left, swing down the feet line and keep the weight left. And I'm really trying to feel like I make a three quarter back swing to three quarter forward. Yeah, and you should notice that it doesn't look like Alex is really. I think I have a, certainly I have a tendency to try and hit the ball too hard when I'm doing it. And then you just create that ball, yeah. and you create the sort of spinny flight that you're looking to avoid. So yes. it's really important, isn't it? Yeah, and, and I, I kind of attach that to gears of a car. So we probably you hit our normal shops than I, and in kind of gear four out of five. Whereas I try and feel it more in gear three, a little bit smoother, a little bit slower. Yeah. Okay, so our next one relates to how to chip from a bad line. Alex, we have given you a particularly bad line Indeed. here. <laughs> um, and it's one of those situations that you're going to need to have a shot that helps you in this scenario because this can be a real car wrecker, can't it? Yeah, I mean, we've all been there late in the round, 16th, 17th of, just missed the green and we, we end up in this. Yeah, so you need to find a technique that is going to take the duff and the thin, and even actually from a lie like this, the double hit out of the equation. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm worried about right now. <laughs> so so what, what, are, what are you doing here to escape and get a good contact on the ball? For me, there's two factors. It's club selection and how we set up to the ball. I think these two things have got to be on point to allow us to, I think our level expectation, we don't expect to get it too close here. It's like I said before, get it on the green. Worst case scenario, bogey, not turning that into a double or a triple. So I, I always like to um, advocate using a more specialist wedge. So we have wedges that are part of the set sometimes, a bit more of a cavity on the back. This is more of like a specialist wedge. Uh, the bounce has got a little bit more bounce on than a traditional set out, uh, wedge out of a set. And this just helps us in terms of interaction on the ground. So my preferred wedge for this is 50 degree, 52 or even 48 could be, as long as it's a specialist wedge, will really help us play this shot. Okay, so... Fine. Technically then, yep. how are you changing it from your normal chipping technique? So my normal chipping technique, I would stand a little bit open. I wouldn't be as close to it. This whole, my sole of the club would be on the ground. And I would feel very similar to a chip and run shot that I would underarm throw it back and through. Whereas this setup changes completely. I like to feel I get the toe on the ground. I walk a little bit closer to it and I grip it just short of the steel. So all I'm trying to feel is that I keep my weight left and I get the toe brushing the ground. So ultimately, we feel as though the toe is working and scooping this ball up. It's like right. it pops it up. Okay. So the best way I can describe it, it's like a knife in butter. It's like a sharp edge yeah. getting into that bad lie and popping it out and up. Okay, go on then, show us how, how it's done. So we're in there, I have a few practice swings. I think it's important to have a practice swing and commit to this, because yeah. a lot of people would see this and be like, ah, Yeah, I'm and probably scared. also to practice it from time to time. Definitely. You know, it's very tempting when you're practicing your chipping just to give yourself a perfect lie and practice those ones that just yeah. spin a little bit on the second bounce. But actually, in reality, it's these shots that are gonna really help you out on the course. These are the ones that keep momentum. You know, if you get up and down for par here, or not even that, you just have, have, don't make um, a card wrecker, then you're gonna feel good walking onto the next going. tee. Yeah. So a few practice swings, just get the toe, interact on the ground, try and feel it's a more of a wooden motion, no real set in the wrist. I try and feel my thumbs are really pointing down to the ground, walking in, weight left. Oh, that's really well played. Do you know, that got a little shooty bounce, but it's fine. I mean, from, from there, I'm, I'm more than I'm more than happy yeah, with that shot. It's a really good shot. It's probably a little bit unlucky actually. So, you know, it's one of these things. It can be tempting not to practice this shot. But when you are confronted with a situation like this out on the golf course, you'll need technique. Hopefully, Alex's that he's shown you there will help you. Okay, so the next one relates to putting, and in particular, putting from long range. If you can get down in two from this area. Uh, more often, it's going to make a massive difference to your momentum and your scoring, and it's just going to help you all round the whole of your game. And it's how do you prepare, and then how, what do you do to make sure that you're getting the ball consistently right in terms of the distance? So preparation is key, getting the speed of the greens. Out on the course, I'm picturing a bin lid around the hole. So not really from this distance looking to hold it. If we do, absolutely fantastic. I think we can get into a bit of trouble trying to hold a putt of this length and it go in three to that four feet Yeah, past. yeah, yeah. So what do you do pre-round then to help you get a better judgment for pace? This might sound quite counterintuitive really, but I don't put towards a hole. Right. I have two golf balls. What I would do is I would put into free space 
and I'd almost try and play balls. I'd try and hit the, my second ball onto my first, because if I can do that, it's a lot harder to do that than it is to get it inside yeah. that bin lid. Okay, so, wh so why do you take the hole out of the equation then? So there's no real outcome in terms of something that I can uh, make it relative to the course. So I'm literally tuning into not actually holding a putt, but getting pace. I think a lot of golfers think they're better at um, pace than they are at reading the putt and they don't actually tune into this enough. So then Alex, what are you doing on the course in a situation like this to make sure that you get that pace right? What I would do is, similar to what we've, we might do on a long chip and run, I would walk half the distance, make a triangle between me and the hole, walk back, and this gives us a great perception of distance. Right, yeah. So looking at something this way, we can ma make it sometimes look a little bit shorter yeah, than it Yeah, it shortens it a little bit, yeah. yeah. And just taking a walk on that journey, you get a little bit of feedback. Is it uphill? Is it downhill? Is it left to right? Because sometimes we've all been there. We looked at a putt from this side, we've gone the other side and we're like, <laughs> it looks totally different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. it gives us a real good instincts come into play. It gives us a real good view of what the hole and what the putt is like. So as I'm preparing for a putt, I'm looking at the hole, I'm making that stroke back and through, asking myself a question, is that enough? If it's not, take it a little bit further back, a little bit further through really getting some great feedback for hitting that putt. Over the golf ball now, one look towards target, pull the trigger. Yeah, very good. Now we've made that stress-free, we're more than happy from 35, 40 feet, walking up to that, tapping it in. We may even mark it for, to be sure, but definitely take stress-free. Put those tips into play and it should help you whenever you're in this sort of situation and you've got a scorecard in your hand and you need to keep it ticking over. Okay, so this one is about the chip and run. Now, I'm sure it's a shot that most of you have played, but how many of you actually practice it? And I think that's the, the key point, isn't it, Alex? Because definitely, you know, it, it's a shot that, that technically, there's not an awful lot of sort of difficulty with it, but it does require practice if you want to, you know, consistently get the ball up and down. Yeah, and I think because it's not a glamorous shot, it's not the shot people see on TV all the time. Yeah. It's like, I don't really want to practice that one too much, but I, I tend to get a lot of people, especially on like playing lessons, things like that, using a rule, if you can put it, let's put it. So in this situation here, we probably can't put this. I know the, the turf's great here. It's quite a long shot really to play, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, so next resort in my head, I'm going, right, if I can chip it, let's run it. So yes, I can chip and run this. Now, okay. I try and think of it in a simple analogy of if I was going to underarm throw it or and the, and the, the strings of the badminton racket here are ultimately in my palm or the club face, how much impetus would I have to put into it? I know it's a lot easier for me to land it five yards in front of me than 25 yards next to the flag on a five pence piece. Okay, so it, when you're planning the shot, how are you figuring out where to land it, how much to run it, what club to hit, all of those elements? So I would tend to, on a shot like this, maybe have a little bit of a walk. Yeah. And especially because there's a little bit of a raise here and get to a point and sort of give myself an, an angle from the side of, what does this shot look like? Because from the side, you get a much better perception of distance. Yeah. When we're looking this way at something, it looks a little bit shorter. A little bit shorter. Yeah, so oh, I tend to get yeah. to the side of it, have a little bit of a look, always walk to where I want to land it on as well. So you've almost got a reference of, even subconsciously, well, that was about 10 yards. I know I can back myself to hit a 10-yard shot. And I think most people watching this would as well, no matter what your handicap is. Whereas if I was trying to land it with my 58 off this lie as well, which is, which is tight. Fairly tight, yeah. <laughs> What would be the mistakes that people make with this shot? I think, like, like, like what I said there, is standing to it like a full shot, letting the club work to around the body. Okay. And then I always think, gra make gravity on your side. So getting closer to the golf ball, and I use this term lightly, straighter back, straighter through. It's never quite straight back, yeah. straight through. But it allows you to easily drop the golf club on the back of the ball, rather than too much around the corner. We're sort of fighting it yeah, yeah, yeah. and scooping it. Okay. So everything's on your side then, a little bit closer, a little bit easier, and make it a little bit more wooden. Okay, go, go on, let's have a look. There you go, really good. And I think the, the point about this shot is, Alex, that it's just, it's one of the safest shots you can hit. Exactly. You know, if you are prone to the odd, you know, chunky chip around the greens or thinning one through the back, and you're playing in competition, it's just a fairly easy shot to play you know, you're not going to make double bogey from this scenario. No, I always say your, your worst chip and run's never going to be as worse as your, your worst lofted shot. Yeah. Okay. So practice that. Hopefully you'll improve.
there you have it. That was our list of the seven most important golf shots that every golfer needs. Um, guys, before you go, please do hit the pause button and let us know, firstly, if you think we've missed any, if they think there are any shots that re really would help players get round in as few shots as possible. And also, if you do use any of these techniques regularly, let us know. We'd be interested to hear your thoughts. Uh, but that's all now from West Hill. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.